Welcome to Garlison Military Weekend 2024. This is a, an annual event. Uh, and this year it's been held in Sorby Tower. Sorby Tower. Sometimes called Slorby Palace for some queer reason. First time I've heard it. <laughs> and I live here. Uh, Sorby Tower was uh, built in the late 1500s. And it was the seat of the, the Hanna family. Clan Hanna. And it was a, quite a busy place up until, uh, they say, 1748, the middle of the... 18th century when it went into disrepair and now it's a bit of a, a ruin and the clan Hannah are trying to do it up but that's where we're holding the military weekend that's the Sorby Tower and this is the military weekend Loads of stalls. Ah, that's a bunch of motorcyclists turned up. And we have uh, a tombola. And of course, the Hive Cafe in Garrison is doing the catering. Get a good you get a good burger there. <laughs> we'll go up this side first. <laughs> Loads of people, we're going to have a singer this year, this is something new. <laughs> we'll get a song. <laughs> Loads of Land Rovers, long wheelbase job. Bikes. And of course everybody's in period costume. Even an MP. You know what I think the MPs, don't you? <laughs> Stretcher wagon. And look at this, this is a, a excellent stall. Uh, what have we got here? This is a baby's gas mask. Uh, a rattle for uh, air raids and gas. Uh, that's not a pea shooter. I think it's a sten. It's a sten gun. Yes. Yes. Sten gun. Very often made with uh, pipes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> which made it which made it cheap uh, and useful, but it wasn't all that reliable. <laughs> It could go off very easily, you could lose uh, a thumb if you didn't hold it properly, you could burn your hand if you didn't hold it properly. <laughs> it's not a stink bomb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got loads of other things. Uh, oh, a fair Bairn Sykes dagger if I remember rightly. Correct, yes. Uh, I saw one of them about the house. Yeah. This is actually, you were saying not a stink bomb, but it's actually a very useful because what they did was they put rubber around the grenade, pulled the pin and then dropped it casually into enemy cars and when the petrol rubbed away at the, eroded the rubber, then it would explode and by that time the agent was gone. Yeah. Of course, uh, this stall is doing stuff from the auxiliaries and the SOE. The SOE, particularly the ladies, because the ladies were very valuable. <laughs> um, they could go anywhere. They could go anywhere, yes. And they also discovered that um, because refugees were commonplace being bombed out of homes, they carried their goods in suitcases, so the SOE cottoned on to that and decided to put radios into suitcases for the ladies to, to carry with them. Uh, they were very heavy, as you can see, and they also had an aerial uh, which was erected, but the trouble was um, that the life expectancy was only six weeks because the enemy uh, triangulated their signal 
and even though they moved around within that triangle, they still knew where they were. So. It was a short life, very brave to even think yes, about it. And that's why we have to keep the stories alive. Because we tend to think of male spies, um, espionage, uh, but in actual fact the women played a large part too. Even today, mm -hmm. it's hard to find out what people did in the SOE. I know of one chap who's been researching his uh, father, and he can't get his father's records until 2031. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what did they really do? Mm -hmm, exactly. And how long did it continue? Mm -hmm. There's a few stories there. That's a, a very good exhibit. Dog's nice as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got Bren. Uh, Lee Enfield, I think. And oh, two Sykes Fair Burn knives. <laughs> oh. uh, up here. I better put my hand in my pocket. Uh, I don't know if I've got biscuits. Hey guys. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Always be good to dogs. Yeah, yeah. But it's, um, I was trying to find it, I started to watch it, but it's disappeared. I don't yeah, mind. <laughs> same. <laughs> oh, and this is more American. Four episodes in. Yeah. Military yeah. police. Yeah, so it's not just me then. Red caps. <laughs> now, over here we've got Sorby Tower. Look at that. I'll tell you what, we're going to do a wee sneaky. That's a more modern Land Rover. Right, let's do a wee sneaky. The clan Hannah are doing this up. Uh, in fact, the guy that's running this uh, uh, event is Steve Hannah, and it's him that uh, looks after this. And tonight, they're still doing it up. And tonight, there's going to be a do in here. What a lovely space for something, isn't it? Beautiful. And the first tent is, I think it's for the Scottish borderers. Cosby's. I don't know if that's modern or no, but it's been about there. Oh, that. And of course, it's a lightweight. Ah, they've been in this stall. This guy started this for nothing. Uh, just a collector of old things and ended up with all this stuff. Uh, radios. It's a Bren, Russian rifle, and uh, Enfield Mark IV. An S, 10, A, one zero SU, and a crown. A nice. Did this line there? That's an A, 10, S, That's a very nice bayonet. I'll have to look up what he yeah, thinks it is. Aye, and there we have. At the back yeah, there yeah, we've got a stove. That's a. It's not Primus. It's an Optimus that one. And <laughs> a World War Two field kitchen. Now this is actually working. It's dishing up soup, soup and sannies. And this is obviously waiting to get fed. I'm going to get in there later as well. 
too true. <laughs> Just take a slow walk. And here we have a tank. Nah, <laughs> it's a piece of mobile artillery. It's called an of it. It came out in the 50s I believe. It's, it actually lives on one of the farms near here. It had to be towed in but it's in. Look at it. It's a beast. And of course some motorbikes. Oh they're, no, they're not that old. And of course, the Air Force have to get in. That is the front end of a Canberra bomber. Now, the Canberra comes from the early 50s and it was, it was your first sort of jet bomber and it went all over the world the Americans were even using it in Vietnam they, they altered it it was nuclear capable as well but uh, one thing it was famous for the crew liked it the crew liked it because you could get out of it quickly I've, I'll let you see that in a minute. Just point it ass, you know. This is me sitting in a Canberra bomber. Who am I going? I don't know. Oh, let's see, it's got a firing button here. Da -da 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 -da. I'm going to use this to go down to the chip here tonight. <laughs> and this is one of the exhibits. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and there's room in the back there for two more. I don't think these are ejector seats, but I've been told that they were the crew loved them because they were easy to get out of. You just opened that door there and just jumped. <laughs> oh, yeah, I even recognise some of the stuff. <laughs> you coming in? <laughs> <laughs> This type of Land Rover was used by a lot of people, including the early 50s Civil Defence Auxiliary Fire Service. They all used this unit. But this is a real thing. <laughs> it's a uh, this is a muckle thing. It was produced back in forty three, nineteen forty three. What have you got here? Bush tech. <laughs> right. That was one of the Polish units. They picked up a beer somewhere uh, on their way over to Great Britain. They picked up a beer and uh, <laughs> it was with them through the war. They even had it when they attacked uh, uh, Monte Cassino. 
it smoked, it drank, it helped them, carried ammunition. <laughs> and it ended up in Edinburgh Zoo. <laughs> yeah. And of course, a memorial to Lewis McGuffey, BC. Lewis McGuffey was a local man, or was a local man, born in Wigton. He was a member of the King's Own Scottish Borderers and served with valour. He was a sergeant during the First War and he died in the later stages of the war. Well remembered locally. Well, I came up here and I see this lady behind this barbed wire fence. I thought maybe she had been bad. <laughs> <laughs> then I have a look at the barbed wire. <laughs> it's made with plastic. Uh, caught it again. Can't it be that bad? <laughs> nice collection. Very nice collection. Thank you. Just looking at this mob here getting a feed. Well, they're not feeding yet. It's no lunchtime yet. No. I think they're eating biscuits and coffee. Getting <laughs> off their dinner. And this is looking good. Looking can I get a stir? You can indeed. Get this. You know I fix it, but it's um, Oh. That oh, smells bro. <laughs> Oh well, they've fired up the habit. Look at the reek coming out of that. He's using cheap diesel. <laughs> Seems like a good day. A good day had by all. Look at it. It's mobbed. <laughs> Final look round. Yes, I remember them. <laughs> We're just waiting on the vehicles turning up for the parade. Quite a nice big crowd gather. There's that old <laughs> American fire engine. <laughs> and of course, Rommel's turned up. <laughs> ah, hello, Rommel. Oh, have you? Yes. But it's, uh, no, I do like the fire embroidery in the Yes, they, they tailored it just for him. Now you can stand still because you're nice. feeling in a right grump today. Yeah, I noticed that. He was, yes, uh... he's, not, he's having a little shouty day today. Ah, oh, he's all right. Yes, it's not actually allowed really, is it, Rommel? Because we do know better, oh. but we're just in that mood. So, <laughs> but we perhaps settle yourself down in a stand. Does he you take dog biscuits? I'll tell you what, he'll get something in a minute if he doesn't stop being... <laughs> This is the the parade part and they're slowly getting in. I think they've been caught. <laughs> yeah, a 
light weight. Does this sound too good? Only two to go and there's some bikes at the back there. <laughs> Only one to go. Good to go. Okay. Right. Attention. Left. Turn. Fire the left. Quick. March. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Right wheel.
event as we look not only at a display of military vehicles and of people who have given of their time for the military. It is a time of remembering. And we should always continue to remember, not just in November on one specific day. We remember so we don't repeat. We remember all who lost their lives, who suffered, whose lives were changed, and not just those who went to war in whatever theatre or war they had to go, but to their families they left behind. But remember also the friendships, the comradeship, the brotherhood, the sharing of all who can understand. And on a personal note, I will say I have been accepted as part of that family who have cared for me since recent surgery. The care and attention has come from you, the veterans. And for that, I personally thank you. But we remember also that all we face and will face, the God is with us. We read in scripture of war, of conflict, of those who stand up for others, those who try to do their best in the eyes of God. For all of faith and belief, know that protection of all that is good in this world is worth that fight, whatever that fight may be. For scripture reminds us we all have a role to fight for what is right. We're reminded in John's Gospel and I have a wee copy of that, which many in the military will recognize. We hear the words, my command is this, love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their lives for their friends. And how many realize it was a military man who at the foot of the cross, when Jesus breathed his last, praised God and said, surely this is the Son of God, the one who laid down his life for us all. So we pray, thank you Lord for the witness given by all who have laid down their lives for others. Those who have given service, faced events that many of us can never understand or comprehend. Things which change their lives irreparably through injury, be it physical or mental. We pray for all the families who've been affected by the results of war past and continuing, as we continue to remember all who gave so much for their country. And remember all who are not with us this day for whatever reason, but who know we are doing this event. But they still continue to live with all they've experienced and witnessed. And we give thanks for an opportunity such as this, bringing together so many diverse people, sharing memories that have passed and making good memories for the future. So may the blessing and peace of God be with all of whatever faith, as we all continue to remember and share in the true love and faith that comes from him and all who believe in doing their best for humanity. Amen. Amen. And now we will have two minutes silence. Who 
We met here today to remember and pay tribute to a remarkable piece of military engineering which made a significant and vital contribution to the final Allied victory in World War II. That is widely accepted to be a true statement. A major beach assault faced two, faces two enemies, the defenders on shore and the weather. The assault on the 6th of June 1944 experienced both. The recent excellent TV coverage of the 80th anniversary of events in Normandy brought home to us the brutal fighting which took place on those five beaches. It was very moving, and one naval veteran when interviewed told us he was on the bridge of one of the warships off the beaches watching through binoculars. He said he had to turn away as he could no longer stand the sight of the casualties he was witnessing on the beaches. Mulberry Harbour was designed in 1942 and built in under a year in great secrecy. Within hours of Allied beachheads being established, sections were being towed across the channel and placed in position. Mulberry A at Omaha for the Americans and Mulberry B at Gold Beach for the British and Canadians, together with about 17 old ships to be sunk as breakwaters. They were then ready to process urgently needed supplies and reinforcements to the troops already ashore. Mulberry B was still in use well over six months later, and it's estimated that two million men, over four million tons of supplies, and some 500,000 vehicles were moved ashore over it. Remarkable. Where does Garleston fit into the picture? The western side of Wigtown Bay was selected for the trials as the tides were similar to those expected on the invasion beaches. Garleston provided a harbour and the remoteness of the area would provide security during the trials. Prototypes were built and transported to the area for testing by the Royal Engineers. These tests revealed problems. After all, that is the purpose of testing. A convenient storm revealed weaknesses on the planned roadway section, which had to be redesigned. And the final product, called a whale, was a floating roadway. 16 kilometers of that roadway were built. If you visit Aromange today and look out to sea, you will see the remnants of Mulberry B, which served Gold, Sword, and Juno beaches. I did this, just that some years ago on a Holtz battlefield tour accompanied by my two sons. On a personal note, my late father was called up during the war and served in the Royal Engineers Transportation Port. He could, have, in theory, have finished up here, but they sent him to Burma. The harbour he worked in was Rangoon after the Japanese had left. In conclusion, Garleston paid, played a vital key role in the necessary testing that led to the final construction of Mulberry Harbours for D-Day 1944. The soldiers who fought their way off those beaches and into the Bocage and on towards Germany were supplied with ammunition, fuel, vehicles, food, clothing and everything a combat soldier needs thanks to Mulberry Harbour constructed after work done here in this place where we are standing today. Thank you. And now wreaths will be laid.
gathering this weekend will continue, though well into the night, I'm sure, as memories are shared, as people stay on. But here in Garleston, and tomorrow, don't forget to go up to Sorby Tower. If you weren't there today, you don't get tomorrow. You'll have missed yourself. Thank you, everybody. Okay. <coughs> Veterans dismissed. moving day in Garlison. And that's us for another year. So the little Rommel and the Royal British Legion of the final one. Nice one.